Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about time, wall clock time and working with various times. So what do we mean when we say wall clock time? Well first of all let's talk about what's not wall clock time. So within the ESP32 there are various timers which we can use to measure intervals. So for example we might uh, get, a, get a time measured in milliseconds or microseconds and then do some operations and then subtract one time from another and figure out how long an operation took. Those are, those are interval times. Uh, things like uh, delaying for a certain amount of time or sleeping for a second, those are interval times. So wall clock time is what happens when we look at a wall clock or we look at our, uh, uh, our watches or we look at our PC times. That's when we are measuring or, or examining what time it is. So as I look at my clock just now, it's 6.06 .06 in the evening in uh, December, December, February the 9th in Texas. So it's, a, it's the wall clock time. It's what time it is. Now in the ESP32, we can tell the ESP32 what time it is and it, we tell it by a mechanism known as the Universal Coordinated Time our UTC and that is the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970 so we tell the ESP32 that numeric value and then the ESP32 ticks along and increments the time every second uh, in a real-time clock. So as time passes we can again ask the ESP32 what time it is and it will tell us uh, the current time because we told it initially the uh, 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 some initial time. So within the ESP32, through the POSIX libraries, there are a couple of functions and data structures that we've got at our disposal in order to work with time-based functions. First of all, there's a data type called time type, and time type is, I believe, a 32-bit unsigned integer, which contains the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. We can get that value by making the function call time. So if we call time, we get back a time type value, which is the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. If we keep calling time and time passes, we'll get back a new number as time keeps incrementing. Now, given a time type, we can parse that time type into a structure, a structure called struct tm. And struct tm takes the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970 and populates a structure. And within that structure, we've got concepts like what is the current year, what is the current month, what is the current day, or date rather, as in February the 9th, so it would be 9, and the month would be 2, and the year would be 2017. We can also, in that structure, parse it out to be the hour, the minute, and the second. So given a time type, we can parse that into a struct tm, and then from the struct tm, we can figure out what hour it is, what minute, what second of the of the of the of the of the clock, and what day of the day of the week, month of the year, and actual year it is. Okay, so when we talk about time, let's also think about the concept of time zones. If I was, uh, for example, to look at my clock and it said it's uh, six o nine p.m. And I was to call my friend in Britain, in London, and said, what time is it? He would say, it's uh, nine minutes past midnight, the next day. And that is because time is not an absolute. Time is relative to the time zone you're in. So if I say it's nine minutes past six in the evening, and he says it's nine minutes past midnight, we're both correct, based on our local time zones. So when we ask the ESP32 for the time and we get back the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970, what we're really talking about is the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970 GMT or Universal Coordinated Time or London if you want to be loose about it. So in the ESP32 environment, we can also specify a time zone, which is the number of hours or minutes east or west of GMT. 
And using that and by arithmetic, we can then calculate our local time. So there's a couple of functions. Uh, time always returns the universal coordinated time. GM time parses the 32-bit uh, time type into the GM time, the uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And local time parses a time type into our local time. So, having said all these great words, let's have a look at some code. So, here, for example, is some C code, which we're going to run on the ESP32. And what it does is it uses a couple of APIs. The first one we're going to use is get time of day. And get time of day populates a time val structure, which contains the number of seconds and microseconds within the second. So this will t return us the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970, as well as the number of microseconds within the current second. Very useful. Then there's a second function, time, and time populates the time uh, 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 variable, which will contain the number of seconds also since the 1st of January 1970, but with no microseconds, a little bit more efficient. And then we've got some interesting conversion functions, C time and ask time. Now, C time will take a time function, uh, I'm sorry, the time value, and produce an ASCII string representation of the current local time. Ask time is a very similar to C time, but it can take an explicit time structure, which we get from GM time, which will again form, uh, uh, parse out the structure, but this time it will return local time. And then we parse these out in a few times, uh, a few different ways just to, just to have a look at it. So I'd, I'd suggest you pause this video, have a look at these functions, and now let's see it run. So I go to my uh, environment, I type a make, monitor, and this now starts my ESP32 running, and we now see some values. So let me pause it here, and what we see is the current time. We see here that it's uh, a few minutes past uh, 6 in the evening, and uh, if we look there, we also see that it is midnight and... Uh, Oh, exactly midnight, so I haven't changed my clock in a while. Midnight in the 1st of January, 197... Oh, I'm sorry. It thinks it's 1969. Aha, let me back up a bit. So it thinks that it's midnight, 1st of January, 1970. And that's because we didn't set the time. We didn't tell the ESP32 what the actual wall clock is. Instead, it thinks it's zero, and hence it's the 1st of January 1970. So if we look at these functions, we're seeing that everything thinks it's the 1st of, 1st of January 1970, except uh, six hours prior to that, which would be the uh, 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 December the 31st, 1969, and that's because I'm using my local time zone here. So in this logic, in this piece of code here, we are displaying the current time, but we haven't actually told the ESP32 what time it is yet. We did set the time zone. This is the code that would set the time zone. We set our environment variable TZ, and I set that to be central time, which is GMT plus 6. So when we run this, it uh, uh, is giving us a number of values. It's telling us the current time, and ESP32 thinks the current time is the 1st of January 1970, and it's displaying that time plus my local time, which is six hours uh, prior to that, which would make it December the 31st, 1969. And then we loop over this, we loop every second, and we keep logging out the clock. Now, the question you're probably asking is, well, this isn't very useful. If the ESP32 doesn't know the actual time, what's the point in displaying these values? Well, this is where we can talk about something called SNTP, or the Simple Network Time Protocol. The Simple Network Time Protocol is a mechanism whereby the ESP32 can call out over the network to an external time server and through, some al and through some algorithmics be told what time it is. And here's an API call, I call it stopped SNTP, which calls out to one of the many time servers out there. Uh, so we, we, we tell the SNTP environment, you're going to poll 
we want you to poll against this uh, time server and we set the address of the time server we want to use and then we call initialize. And what this does is this instructs the ESP32 to start calling out to the time server and figure out what figure out what time it is. So where is that being called? Where is that being called? Did I comment that out? No, there it is. It's been called here. So I'd already been calling this in my code, so why hadn't we been seeing this in the code? And the answer is because I had stopped after just a couple of seconds. It takes about two to five seconds for the ESP32 to make the calls to the time server and get the right time. So let's start my environment again and let's watch what happens after a few seconds. So it thinks it's 1969 and then notice, let me stop it again. Now we have our real time. So there was, uh, 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 after a few seconds, the time as reported by all the time functions changed because it now figured out by calling out to the simple network time protocol what my actual time was. So we jump from 1st of January 1970 to the current time, which is February the 9th, quarter past six in the evening, or quarter past midnight uh, on February the 10th in GMT. And as time passes, we go from 14 to 15 to 16 to 17, because my loop is repeating uh, once a second, and we're logging out the time periods. So as my uh, ESP32 carries on, it knows precisely what time it is both here locally, because I've told it the local time zone, and of course it's measuring that as seconds since the 1st of January 1970. What I'd encourage you to do now is uh, review this code. I'll post it up on GitHub and you can run this yourself and play with these time functions. There's quite a few time functions in the ESP32 environment. Get time of day will return low level times including seconds and microseconds. Time will return the number of seconds since the 1st of January 1970. C time will convert my uh, time type into a formatted string. Uh, as time will do the same, but it will take whatever time structure I give it. GM time will take a time type and parse that out into the constituent variables, uh, as will local time. And here we're looking at the structure of the TM structure, which contains the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and the second. So all of these functions, when put together, allow us to do all kinds of manipulation with time. I hope you found this useful, and uh, I look forward to making more videos in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.